Hello, welcome to the Invivo Imaging Success Knowledge Sharing Video Forum. I'm Alexandra DeLille and Director of Technical Applications at Perkin Elmer for Invivo Imaging. Today we will discuss how to label your cells with Lissafrase for Invivo Imaging. If you have questions and want to explore further, feel free to email me at alexandra.delille at perkinelmer.com. Lissafrases the most commonly used luciferases for in vivo imaging are isolated from the firefly, the click beetle, the Gaussia copepod, or Vanilla C. pansy. Firefly and click beetle luciferase use D. luciferin as a substrate, while Gaussia and Vanilla luciferase use cilantrazine. Firefly and click beetle red luciferase emit around 600 nanometers, while click beetle green, Vanilla, and Gaussia emit around 500 nanometers. As tissue is more permeant to light above 600 nanometers, the firefly and click beetle red luciferases will offer higher sensitivity in vivo. Creating your own luciferase cell lines with the red effect lentiviral particles from Perkin Elmer facilitate easy labeling of cell lines with luciferase. There are three constitutive constructs to choose from. The first one encodes the red Italian firefly luciferase emitting at 620 nanometers. The second lenti co-expresses the red Italian firefly and GFP, facilitating immunohistopath and flow cytometry. Keep in mind, however, that GFP attenuates firefly luciferase about tenfold. And lastly, a new and very bright Renilla luciferase is featured that emits at 535 nanometers. This Renilla luciferase is an excellent choice for dual reporter assays. Each of the constructs drive expression of the reporter gene and the ubiquitin C promoter, the best choice for stable expression. When designing dual reporter assays, we traditionally recommend to use the weakest reporter, Renilla, for the strongest signal. Thus one would use a constitutively expressed Renilla combined with an inducible firefly luciferase. On the left you can see the in vitro stability of expression over time of MDA MB231 cells transduced with vanilla luciferase. The image of the mice illustrates and compares signal intensity of a lung metastasis model with cells expressing either vanilla luciferase in the left mouse or firefly luciferase in the right mouse. Indeed, vanilla renders a lower photon emission. However, you can see that we can still detect the tumor cells deep in the lungs. Examples from the literature The development and utilization of a lentiviral vector containing an enhanced firefly luciferase gene to transduce tumor cells was illustrated by Dr. Kim and colleagues in PLOS One. The resulting single cell clones of the mouse memory gland tumor 41 showed stable light emission in the range of 10,000 photons per second per cell. In some cases, individual 41 LUC2 cells inserted under the skin of a nude nude mouse could be detected non-invasively using an IVIS in vivo imaging system. The significantly higher luciferase activity in these cells also allowed to detect micrometastases. Inoculation of just 541 luciferase cells subcutaneously allowed to detect the cells and tumor growth could be monitored from day 1 on, while caliper measurement was not possible until day 28. The significant advantage of the capability to capture the entire exponential tumor growth phase is important for drug efficacy studies. This is one of the earliest in vivo dual reporter publications by Dr. Zwang and Alderi, illustrating tumor cells with SV40 constitutive vanilla luciferase expression and P53 response element driven firefly luciferase expression. As you can see, adenovirus E6 effectively degrades P53, decreasing firefly luciferase light emission. Adenovirus like Z serves as a negative control. How to transduce cells? It is easy to transduce your cells. You incubate the cells with the lentivirus for 24 to 48 hours in the presence of polybrain. Next, you select for photon emission or with pyromycin or fax. You can assay the bioluminescent signal with the IVIS. 
and in the last step one can select monoclones for stable saline generation. You may wonder what is a lentivirus. A lentivirus is a retrovirus capable of infecting non-dividing cells. The most commonly known lentivirus is HIV. Third generation lentiviruses are replication incompetent and feature enhanced biosafety. NIH guidelines recommend lentiviral particles to be handled as biosafety level 2. Key features of the Red Effect lentiviruses Red Effect lentiviruses offer brighter red shifted luciferase for best sensitivity in vivo, multiplex firefly luciferase with bright green vanilla luciferase. We utilize the Ubiquitin C promoter for stable long term luciferase expression. The Red Effect lentiviruses offer rapid, highly efficient, and stable transduction. Red effect lentiviruses can be used to transduce mammalian cancer cells, stem cells, non-dividing cells, and other cell types. Thanks for viewing this knowledge sharing presentation. Stay tuned for more videos. If you have questions, feel free to contact me by email at alexandra.delil at